Are you still struggling to finesse your flip turn? Have you spent hours watching fellow pool swimmers, studying tutorials, breaking it down and building it back up again? Well, it's okay. You're probably really close to nailing it, but just one or two small wrong moves can throw the whole movement out of sync. So today we're going to flip it. We're going to be covering all of the potential things that you could be doing wrong. And then of course, how to correct them. Use it, don't lose it. I'm talking about momentum here as you're coming into the wall. It's tempting to actually back off the pace. You've got a lot to think about the process of the tumble turn. Maybe you're a little bit worried about trying to get your stroke placement just right or your ankles potentially hitting the wall. And before you realize it, all that speed you've built up through the length could start to drop off. But actually, momentum is your friend. And if anything, you want to try and speed up a little bit going into the wall as this will help for your body to actually process that flip turn to get your body into the rotation of the forward roll and then also if you think about it you've got to get your legs defying gravity and over the top of the surface of the water and more speed is going to make that easier. So in order to speed this movement up you need to use your underwater pull so take that first stroke and then leave your arm by your hip and once you've almost at the wall that's when you take the final pull with the remaining outstretched arm and you combine this with the chin tuck so Think about how heavy your head is and how its position can affect your stroke. This is where you can use it to your advantage. Tucking your chin in will bring your head forwards and down and the rest of your body will naturally follow. Working out the distance that you need to be away from the wall to start your turn is going to be the best way to maintain your speed because you'll have the confidence that you know exactly where to do it. And starting too far away will really start to drop your speed off. If you're gliding or you've got both arms down by your side, you've got a huge area of resistance, you'll just be slowing down. If you end up too close, well, not only is that really difficult to actually make yourself in a tight enough ball, it'll affect the push off, which we'll come to later on. So this is where we need to introduce the T marker, that black line or the black T on the bottom of the pool. And this is your guidance. So you need to start experimenting. But the key here is to make sure with your experimenting, you're swimming at the pace you intend to swim at in your normal flip turn. Because if you're doing it slower or faster now, as soon as you change that pace when you put it all back together, you'll find you're at a different position. So nail your speed and then start a little bit further out than you might think you need to and just do the flip turn. You're not trying to push off, you're just turning over and seeing with your legs outstretched if they're touching the wall. If they just touch the wall and they're straight, you're still too far away. So you need to bring it a little bit closer and a little bit closer still, because ideally you want to be touching that wall with your knees bent at around a 90 degree angle, maybe a little bit more, because then you need that power for pushing off. So this will take a bit of time and patience to dial it in. But once you've got that right position, you'll be able to have the confidence and help maintain that speed. Opening up your body midway through your turn is a really common error and one that can completely turn your turn upside down, literally. If you're someone who thinks that you've nailed the first part of a turn but somehow end up facing in a completely different direction, maybe even parallel to the wall at the end of your tumble, well, this could be the reason. And even if that isn't you, just have a think about hydrodynamics for a moment. The smaller the area going through the water, the less resistance. And this is exactly the same for your torso and your legs. And you might see some swimmers who come over with their legs straight and they make a really impressive slap on the water as they get to the turn. But this isn't really very efficient because if you think about it, the feet are having to move much further in a wider arch. And as a result, it's gonna take more energy to get them over the top of the water. Basically, you want to remain tucked up in a small ball for the full rotation until your feet make firm contact with the wall and only then can you start to open up. So practice this to start with away from the wall. If even doing it with swimming is too much to start with, then just push off the wall or the bottom of the pool and practice what is in theory just a forward roll. Work on making yourself as small as possible for that full rotation. Think knees to chest, chin to chest, arms tucked in by your side. If you can try practicing a few forward rolls in a row in the water, what you'll soon notice if you're still tucked, as if you untuck, it'll become quite challenging all of a sudden. Once you've mastered that small tuck, put it into a length of swimming. So swim a few strokes, practice the actual tuck, and then go straight back into swimming again and focusing on keeping it as small as possible and getting your rotation over as quickly as possible.
So let's say you've mastered the momentum into the wall, you've got the nice small tuck and you're getting your feet to make contact with the surface, but somehow you're still ending up in the neighboring lane. Well, this is a common mistake and it's usually due to foot placement on the wall. If you're getting in too tight or you're putting your feet up too high on the wall, well, this is gonna send you diving down to the bottom. If you're turning too far away from the wall, well, you're just gonna end up flat and not being able to push off very much at all. Or if you're twisting in the water as you're doing your turn, well, that's probably gonna send you off in all different directions. So we need to break it right back down to basics. And we're gonna start by just swimming in, doing the tumble turn and stopping where your feet touch the wall. If you've done it correctly, you'll be on your back, just under the water, facing the ceiling or the sky, with your feet on the wall, toes facing up. And there should be a bend in your knees and your feet should not be touching, but equally, they should be no wider than your hips. So once you've got that movement dialed in, only then can you start to look at the push off. And yes, you're on your back, but we'll come on to how to move into your front later on. But to start with, I just want you actually practicing the push off from that position and making sure you're pushing off in a straight line because that will ensure that your feet have been placed correctly on the wall. And only once you've got that mastered and you're really sure it's sorted, can you start to look at the rotation. And if you watched top level elite swimmers, you'll notice that they actually place their feet at a slight angle on the wall. And this is obviously helping them rotate in to the front crawl or onto the front to ready to swim. But right now, don't you have to worry about that. I just want you to think about still placing your feet where you were and just implementing a bit of rotation as you push off from the wall and you'll move onto your front that way. Because if you start to rotate before you're ready, that's when we'll see the turn going a little bit wrong again. Well, more on the push off. This is where a lot of errors also happen and so much energy can be saved, but it's really tempting to concentrate so much on the flip turn and be really relieved that you've got your feet on, you're facing the right direction, and then you forget about this next vital part. And also you might be a bit out of breath, so you shoot right up to the surface and grab your breath. But it's really important to be streamlined as in theory, you should be going faster out of the wall than you will be the rest of the length because that power from your legs will propel you forwards faster than your stroke can. So you need to think about where your hands are when you actually go to push off the wall. So obviously they will have reached your hips as you entered into that turn, but now you need them pushing past your head to be able to make that pencil streamlined shape. So once you've tucked and you've turned, your hands still need to remain relatively still until your feet are on the wall. And then they come up close to your body and push forward so that one ends up on top of the other, making the smallest surface area possible. Keeping your head squeezed in between your arms, you'll be able to push off that wall with minimal resistance and maximum speed. You're pretty much there. There's just one final common error, and that is losing that momentum and that power you have off the wall as you transition from your streamlined position into your first few strokes. And yes, I know you're gonna be wanting to get air into your lungs at this point, but try to transition at least into one pull possibly two before you take your first breath. So it's gonna be a normal front core breath, not lifting your head up to gasp for the air because that's just gonna slow you down straight away. So from the streamline position, start your leg kick just before your first pull, one or two strokes, take a normal breath and you should then be transitioning nice and smoothly into that stroke. Now I know we've covered lots of various points today and to actually nail the flip turn, you're gonna to have to do all of those correctly and simultaneously and it's a huge amount to consider, but you can practice breaking them down in training and then putting them back together. And if you continue to practice it will get smoother it will get faster and eventually you'll question why it was ever even so hard i promise you trust us on that one well if you've still got any questions or there's an element of your tumble turn that you think you're struggling with and you can't work out why do let us know in the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer it well hopefully you've enjoyed it give us a like and remember to click on the globe and the bell icon so you get notified of every gtm video